hello and welcome to episode eight of Keep On Cyber Trucking. Uh, my name is Eric. We got Will Chase here. How are you guys doing? Good. Great. Great. <laughs> Another week above ground. Not too busy of a week. Uh, some cool news, but I mean that's been pretty much it. Like uh, my truck was rented out for the most of the time, and then I was out of town for the other part of it. So mm. all good. Yeah, you it's were you. You were busy. You were busy last week. We know that. And then, um, but I guess let's dive into it because I have a, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, first thing that we should talk about, I think what we should open up with is the brand new Model 3. Hell yeah. Let me... Yeah, I saw all the announcement stuff, but I was watching all the earnings call shit. So it's like I didn't, I didn't say... I mean, the, it looks it looks cool, whatever the specs were for it. But I was like, I didn't, I was didn't have my full attention. Yeah, you were you were preoccupied. Yeah. Um, I would like to just you know touch on this because I think this is a really cool um, addition to their lineup of vehicles. Um, I think it's something that will give the Tesla consumer um, something to get excited about, given the fact that you're getting a performance vehicle at a uh, really affordable price. Um, starting price is a little under fifty-three thousand. Uh, you're getting two hundred ninety-six miles of range, one hundred sixty-three miles per hour top speed, and a two point nine zero to sixty. Um, also, play. yeah, and they're giving you a, a different uh, front bumper and rear bumper. Uh, I could toggle that right here. Yeah. You can see that there. They're giving I, 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 you. I, I... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. they're giving you um, a rear spo spoiler. They're giving you different wheels, and the thing I love the most about it is, um, if I could find it, but the updated uh, interiors. Yes, that's what I gotta find. Hold on. How the hell do I find that? Oh, it's in this right here. I've got to change my screen. Bear with me. There we go. So right here. So this is this might give a better idea. So it gives this um, front bumper just a little more aggressive look. The wheels, but these these interior seats that they're doing now on the plats and they're including the model three performance model with these seats, which I, I think are really cool. They're more race inspired seats. Um, here's that rear spoiler. Oh, does it come carbon fiber by default? It looks good. The, the spoiler. Yes. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. And then the nice. dash, the dash is going to be carbon fiber as well. Has yeah. the plaid, um, Logo on the back. I like it. I, I mean, the price point is probably the sexiest thing about it. Because if yes. you look at the Model S in comparison, just all-wheel drive Model S is seventy-two thousand or seventy-three thousand um, with a three-point one zero to sixty, so a little mm -hmm. faster than a Model mm -hmm. S. Less range because Model S you're still about you're about four hundred thousand or sorry four hundred thousand sorry four hundred two uh, mile range. Mm -hmm. Uh, for twenty thousand less, and a little bit slower than a than a plaid, but still, I mean, still pretty comparable. Like two point six, two point nine seconds is still so plenty fast. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what you're gonna get it, it, the the plaid Model S is I drove one. It's amazing. It's it's crazy fast. It's it's a beautiful car. But I think I've had a a Model Three. I've had we have a Model S right now. It's a totally different driving experience, just given the sheer size of each vehicle. Um, the Model 3 really does feel like almost like a go-kart type of experience. It's so small and nimble. and um, I mean, all Teslas, all Teslas drive really, really nice, in my opinion. But the Model 3 is a little bit uh, almost like more fun to drive is, is maybe the way I would explain it. So... Yeah, maybe it's not the specs are a little, you know, they're close. 
uh, between just the normal Model S and the Performance Model 3, but I think getting behind the wheel of one and driving it around, turning and all that, I think the Model 3 is going to feel a bit sportier. Yeah. My I, I my wife has a Model Y, and, and every time I get in it, every time I have to drive it anywhere, I'm like, this thing feels like a go-kart. Yes. It just it just has some punch and mm-hmm. the lightweightness, the responsiveness mm-hmm. of it. So I imagine the three is like even more of that. Yeah. And so yeah, cramming it into a performance. Yes. Oh, yeah. Some of the people people are going to get pulled over at this thing for sure. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, my the first place my brain goes is that if they're updating Model Three, obviously we had the the uh, Model Three update, and then now like a not really a plaid Model Three, but a ludicrous Model Three. Uh, and that's that's actually different. So like the the logo even in the in the seat and then on the the placard on the back is actually different than the plaid. So it's not it's like an insane mode I think they're calling it, um, not plaid. Um, but the question is, when are they going to start incorporating steer by wire into these vehicles? I feel like Model S now is kind of coyed up for a steer by wire update. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they're saving that for the Roadster. I don't know. Yeah. I bet you that they. I bet you it's one of those to to implement it into the Model Three will probably take more time, even though it seems simpler. Just because I'm imagining that the the volume that they work in for the three and Y being able to change over the the build of yeah. the of this three into or three and Y into having steer by wire, I would just imagine would be a a much bigger task than just simply, oh, it's a smaller car. It should be so easy. I don't think it would be. I, I would yeah, imagine yeah, that the S and X would get it. I was going to say, I, I would imagine the X would get it before anything else, exactly for this the reasons that you just explained, Will, that Size. The, the production on it is not as much as 3 and the Y. You know, those things, they're pumping those things out all day. And so to yeah. redo so they the can line. Slow down the line. Yeah. Or, yeah. The complexity of it. Making changes doesn't doesn't disrupt things quite as much versus the three no. and Y where they they produce so many all the time. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but an easier w- lift for them to change this and add a try add a, a third motor, and then it's not as big of a change to what they already have. I, I had one question about the, the, this new front end though. Is it this is the new front end exclusive to this one, or is it or is it it's all? Oh no, the, yeah, the rear wheel drive and the it, long range still have the same old the front fascia yes. or whatever. Yes. This is a different. Yeah, the performance has a different uh, front um, bumper and rear. And it is interesting because I, it's like it's funny because I've always thought that the three and Y, the front end to me just kind of looked, kind of looked cheap. It kind of looked like rubber pulled across a face or something. It just, it was, yeah. it's just so like blah mm-hmm. versus the performance where it's like okay, okay, it's got yeah, like you said, it's like a little bit more aggressive a stance yeah. and look to it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like okay, that's and that and that does kind of match with the brand i guess should be so yep cool. newly designed wheels too those are brand mm-hmm. new that i'm sure that aftermarket will try to recreate for for other yeah. Teslas as well and it has adaptive um dampening system so the suspension is going to be um you know it's gonna it's gonna change based off of the road conditions and um the driving settings that you uh, turn on and off, which which is something that's a first for uh, the Model yeah. Three. So that's and it's cool. saying that it's saying order it now. It's de- estimated delivery May or June. Yeah, yeah. I seen pretty somebody pretty online that already placed their order, and um, they have it. You know, they're hoping they get it soon. So I think yeah, you said May. Did we did we call it out the the gap in in production? Because it seems like they're already uh, queued up with a few these made. It seems like that they're they're ready to start shipping for sure. I mean, obviously it's yeah. two three months away. They're they're ready, but it's just interesting. That... Well, I mean, May is like a week away. It's like yeah. it's right on the doorstep. So mm-hmm. yeah, they've. I feel like they've been accumulating to get ready for this. Yeah, perfectly timed for earnings. That's for sure. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> well, we have Hugo uh, in the chat. Said it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Hugo. Uh... Hugo's in the chat just saying good evening. So good hey, evening, what up, Hugo. Hugo. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> you yeah. guys are wanting it, so let's just get to it. Um, so let's talk about the earnings call. 
Tesla earnings call was yesterday, right? Yeah. Did you guys um, listen to it? I did not. I was not at work. I, I wasn't able to. I had to catch up on it afterwards. But um, I know you have a lot of thoughts, Will. You listened to hey, it. Did you, did you say you listened to it? I caught parts in the highlights. But, but okay. I will say that uh, Tesla's up 16% today. They're they're up today. They're they're up. Yeah. I think they they were up slightly after the earnings call, right? Or once it closed, and then but, yeah, um, it jumped six percent. I think after after hours after the call concluded, and then yeah, like sixteen percent today. Yep. So That's crazy. So they're up right now. Um, yeah. But why don't you guys dive into it as I pull something up real quick? Tesla. Okay. Yeah. So I was listening to it all pretty much. I think that I came into it about ten minutes late, so I, I'm sure that I missed some some earlier mention. Like I think that I missed whatever the early comments where he had about the model, what they called model two, the the affordable model, because they seemed very tight lipped about it. They were very. It, when I, by the time I tuned in, he was like, "Yeah, I've said all we're gonna say about about that that cheaper car," and I think that the 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 fervor of the internet, their imagination ran away with it immediately, being like, "Okay, so it doesn't sound like it's a Model Two, as in a completely separate production line. It sounds like a cheap Model Three, or or some sort of you know some sort of uh, uh I don't know cost saving measures applied to an existing platform in order to make it." this lower cost vehicle and maybe the the um the vessel for that will become robo taxis um and a bunch of people were mentioning that i mean i i will say elon did sound much more focused i feel like he's probably been working on um just i guess, i don't know staying engaged to something like this without kind of he only really went on one tangent which had something to do with how many billions or trillions of cells we have in our body versus how how much bacteria <laughs> and it's like bro come on. back line come on i guess they're so, <laughs> exactly exactly so i mean after that point i mean he was he was pretty much on the point for what the messages were um obviously the messages are are kind of the 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 topic of discussion for today um, I have, I, yeah, like you, like you had said, I have my thoughts because you saw my bold caps uh, message in the chat. Um, you know, my 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 first thought about the earnings report was uh, at the very end of it, uh, the CFO announced that his resignation had been accepted, and that you know this was basically entering his exit spiral or whatever, what have you. And then today, it, uh, I think that I had read that he they had filed their their 10K or whatever the new financials were that. That declared that the CFO was selling like four hundred sixty million dollars worth of stock on his exit or something like that, and you know somebody pointed out I was like, if you are uh, if you're if this is the verge of automation, if you are the night before turning your several hundred billion dollar company into a into potentially tens of trillion dollar company, and you're the CFO, why do you leave right before a payday? Like why do you cash out now? To go spend time with your family versus sticking it out and getting ten times like he he got four hundred million dollars that is nothing to nothing to that's amazing but it's like that could have been four billion dollars if they are where they are where they say they are with automation and I'm like something doesn't add up with that and everybody's like that's weird so especially the reaction I think that's what's the oddest thing is that all of these. Uh, all these bullet points would lead you to think that the the stock was going to plummet and get us closer to 100, but it did the opposite. So it's yeah, it's odd. it had a nice rebound. I mean, you know, and I, I think that the filing was a a whole. You know, it's already been done. He already sold the stocks or added them. Or does whatever, whatever, do whatever they have to do to to offload them. Um, but I I just thought that it was really really interesting because. Every, all of the discussion, especially in the in the earnings call, seemed like it was very focused on this notion of automation and and the future for Tesla. That's that's their core. This is their this is their mission now. It's right up there next to you know make 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 us reliable on a renewable future. Right. right next to it, automation. That's our game. We're gonna we're gonna solve it, guys. Which is right on the heels, and we didn't even mention it about the cut to full self driving, almost in half. Yeah, yes. Um, let me cue that up. Which is not. I don't. I mean, it's it's contrary to what we were thinking. Like 
Uh, I think that it was that hidden third option. It was it was we thought that either they were going to keep the price where it was and and cut a deal on a subscriptions or allow for for transfers more. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that I saw them necessarily discounting it. And the fact that they did does I, I feel like it, it's it's a bigger you know when you're in your house and you hear like a really loud bang outside and you're like ah eh, whatever that was <laughs> like there's a part of you that's still like we should probably go check on that. I feel like this is one of those one of those things because it's like they're like automation guys automation we we're there we're like robo taxis in three months three robo taxis in three freaking months guys and then it's like by the way full self driving we're gonna we're gonna throw you guys a fire sale it just yeah. it, I, you know it's it's odd but uh, the other half of it I I feel like is the reaction to just the general economy like interest rates are still up they're not going down anytime soon so it's like they have to bring prices down otherwise they're going to lose out on sales so that's probably one of the big upsells that they were looking at they're like hey maybe we could slice it in half and then more people will buy into it uh that are buying brand new this year but i don't know like i think that's interest rates definitely need to you know come down if they're wanting to i I think that they learned something from that from that full self-driving trial i feel like they learned something regarding like maybe there's a lot of interest Maybe there was enough interest. Maybe they had, you know, oh, people who had done the trial, maybe they did a, a, a quick survey. And the survey was something like, okay, if 70% of respondents say that they're interested in it, we set it to this price. Versus 50% of the respondents say that they liked it and would buy it, the, then maybe we'll cut the, dis- cut the price to another number for a short period. Whatever maximizes based on that sentiment. Um so that I mean, this may have just all been kind of an algorithm for it. I, I you know, whenever they, whenever Tesla moves moves a price, I usually I'm like, all right, just wait a minute because they've done price changes and then a week later change them back or right. been like, never mind, we sobered up or we got Elon away from the keyboard, sorry, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> well, that's a good point too. That right, literally right before this, the the call to to say that full self driving monthly cost was only going to be a hundred dollars a month. There was a big reaction to that. Mm-hmm. That people were like, "Whoa, you know, I way overpaid." And then a few days later, now we're like, "All right, they cut it in half." So it's yeah, definitely going in that route. Well, I think it, people it, looked at they, they did that number crunch, didn't they? They were like, "Okay, rental for for two hundred dollars a month times twenty four months, twenty four hundred dollars times ten eight years on the battery life equals this." And it's like that's still more that's going to be slightly more expensive. It's you know more economical to to subscribe to it or buy it or whatever. Right. It is, well, in my experience with full self-driving, so when I had my Model 3 and they first released um, full self-driving, I don't remember exactly what it was, maybe um, like two, $3,000, something like that. And gradually, um, they started increasing the pricing on it. And I think it got up to about $6,000. And I yeah. regretted not buying it at whatever they opened up at. Let's just call it three thousand dollars, right? I regretted it. I was like, "Oh no, man! Now it's six thousand. It's double. I should have bought it at three. What was I thinking?" Well, then um, they did a discount. They cut it down to, I believe, two thousand dollars. And at that time, I didn't buy. It. I still didn't buy, it. even though I had the regrets. I still didn't buy. It. I go, ah, you know, I don't need it. What do I really need it? Talk to my wife about it, and we were like, she, it was her car, so she was like, I'm never going to use it. Well, we don't need it. Well, a few weeks goes by, it goes back to 6000 I'm, once again, going, man, I should have just bought it. I don't know what I was thinking. Why did I let her convince me into it, you know, or not buying it? And then a, maybe four or five months goes by, and they reduced it down to 3000 And then I said, okay, I got to buy it. You know, I have to. So I jumped on it. I bought it. And I think that's the so the point of my story is that I think that's the kind of the game that Tesla does. They they put it at a certain price, and so you're thinking, wow, twelve thousand dollars that's a lot of money. There's people that paid that, right? <laughs> then they reduce it to eight thousand, and now every, it's a fire sale. It's yeah, the hottest the thing. Yeah, and go buy, their, go buy, go buy. The night go before buy. tomorrow, yes. they'll have automation. Your car is worth fifty thousand dollars more when you wake up. You know exactly. And so you go mm-hmm. out. People are probably buying it at 8000 because they're going, it's it's not going to get any lower than this. I have to buy it. And so they go and they jump on it, they buy it. And in a month or so, it'll jump back up. And that's just, yeah. you know, that's just the way, it's a marketing thing. And that's just the way they do it. And I don't blame them. I mean, it's smart. I mean, and, and whoever does get in right now at 8000 I think it's actually smart because if you're going to use it, this is a great price. So, 
you know, do it. Go there, Chase. Did we lose him? Oh, there we go. You're back. Okay. Oh, you. Sorry, Eric. You cut out there, was, there for a hot. There's minute. a glitch in the matrix a little bit. Oh, yeah. did I? So I was talking for yeah, no reason. Yeah, just for Chase a second. and I lost you. Yeah. Just for a couple of seconds. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I see that I froze up. Um. So yeah. So I was just saying that I think it's a great deal, and if you can, if if you're looking to get full self driving right now is a great time to buy it because it's, I don't think it's going to get any cheaper anytime soon. And it's just going to go up. Yeah. I it's, will say this. I have, I've been a full self driving driver and enthusiast this entire time. Uh, navigate on autopilot and enhanced autopilot FSD when they started calling it beta, you know, I, I feel like the full self driving has really, really, really improved a lot over the last six years, especially, uh, sorry, the EAP and everything, but especially since FSD beta started hitting people, it's improved a lot, and it's improved to the point where, I mean, I feel comfortable using it a lot, and and, and I'm not saying I'll let my guard down, but it's certainly letting the mental load more rest on the car in certain, in certain stretches of road, if you will. And I think that the more people potentially just try to use it, I know I'm very willing to try new technology and, and, and really try it, like put my life, you know, in the hands of a car to drive me. And it's always, it has been so great for, for Tesla that I'm excited and I'm hoping that more people pick up the, the full self-driving just because there's a lot of negative sentiment from from the internet and from articles and from all this all these different sources. But it's like, here I am telling you, I drive it and it works great. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna oversell it. I'm not gonna say it's gonna, you know, cure cancer or teach your teach your kids to use the potty or something like that. It's just a fantastic tool that I think is a solid generation, a solid evolution past cruise control. And Can I tell it something as complex as drive me to Papa John's and feel like it'll get me there necessarily? I'm worried. There, there is there's rough edges to it, but well, I do think that it's valuable. Well, on that point. For anybody that wants to go see full self driving, I released a video today on uh, one of my buddies who helps me film. Uh, he, you I look let, nervous. Yeah. Well, no. I, here, let me Is he driving or the car driving? Come on. He's, so, so <laughs> he, like so he's he's a, a virgin to driving Tesla. Yeah, to driving. Okay. He's a he's yeah. a virgin to Tesla. He's a virgin to EVs. He's never driven an EV before. Never driven Ooh, a okay. Tesla before. Okay. Obviously, Sounding never. Keyboard. Yes, never been <laughs> behind the wheel of full self driving. So this was a great um, video because he was just freaking out yeah. <laughs> when, the, <laughs> when the wheel started turning, and he was like, "What the hell is this thing doing?" But there was some hiccups. So anybody mm-hmm. that wants to go look at my video, go watch it. Go check it. Go ahead. Yep. I will. And, and I, I will kind of kind of go along with that sentiment. Like when you first like give up control, it's uh, it's a real. It's weird because you've you've driven for so many years. Well, I've driven for so many years, and a lot of people have too. But you're just like you're you're trained into like you're yeah. like this is how you do it, and now you just like you don't, and you're just it's just weird because then you're going like you know 75 down the highway and then here comes a construction zone and you're like what's it gonna do is it gonna like slam yep. right into the wall or is it gonna like navigate and it does like it's just it's crazy like okay. once you get so, past that it's good so in our video we hit a construction zone and the lights nice. were out okay mm-hmm. they were covered up and so it reacted to it you know, and and so it's 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 an interesting video. If you want to check it out, yeah. you know, go check it out. I, I but, would like to say this. Hang on. The, so also having now done done a, a long road trip up to Cupertino in the Rivian. I, I was going to ask you what car you took. I knew. Yeah, you were gonna take I took. Your Rivian. I, took I, I well, the 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 Cybertruck was was actually on a rental. So okay. they were making you money. Oh, I'm time. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, a long drive like that, I wouldn't necessarily want to take the Cybertruck for the lack of autopilot. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fair. That's fair. I mean, it's a 400 mile drive, and I've done it a bunch of times, so it's not like I'm going to see something new. So I'm like, all right, it's a relaxing ride, but I kind of yeah. like my my technical chauffeur. They right? need to release autopilot for road trips, man. It's. I just don't think I'm... there's enough data yet, and if you think no, about there it, like but... with no. the cameras being lifted and lowered. They're just going to need more data. Yeah. Well, um, will doing the doing the but doing the the driver plus 
up there. It, it's still because that was also one of the things in the earnings call was Elon officially saying it's like, yeah, we are talking to at least one automaker, and there's still a part of me that I'm like, I'm hoping, but I'm also Same. thinking it's going to be Rivian. So probably, so too. and we'll I bet that's we'll why Rivian upticked in the middle of the day. Yeah, so there's that. <laughs> I mean, the overall market had a bounce, so I think that's probably pro- from it. But uh, I don't yeah. think Tesla caused the the market to bounce the way it did. But who knows? Well, Will, there's um a question in the chat specifically for you. Oh crap! So our uh, viewer Bill Sellers is asking. He says, what up, Bill? he goes, so William, do you think this changes the future price for FSD? Do you still think it will hit 15 to 20 K? That's a good question. Yes, I do think so. Because I, 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 I've been impressed by where Tesla says that they are, the things that they're producing. There's been plenty of times that they've been misleading, but I have personally been driving my vehicle and I know that there's a fair amount of, of improvement and growth that needs to happen in, in FSD to really kind of hit uh, level three. And the problem is I don't know if they have the guidance and the skill to necessarily reach it. But given the current state of FSD to the point where I think that if they can solve the issue of the last 5% or the last 5% of a ride in a, in a vehicle that has FSD, those two gaps... I think could easily make FSD worth fifteen to twenty thousand. Because right now, I feel comfortable getting into my car. Let's say I'm taking my take my car from my house to go get Taco Bell. So I get I walk into into my car, put in the address to Taco Bell. I still kind of have to navigate it out and and get it driving. But once I get to a stop or two away from the house, this is with my, with my Model X with FSD, I can activate the full self driving beta and feel pretty confident that it'll get to, um, I'll get near Taco Bell. But the problem is getting to it, getting to the the parking space nearby. I'm excited to see the auto park and see them improve with that thing. These are the the little touches that I think are on the front and end of every drive that needs the attention because the middle part has only improved drastically over the years from the point that I've seen it where I had to help the car change lanes on the highway down to I've watched my car make flawless left turns across traffic. I've watched it do, you know, split median uh, left turns a number of times. It, it just, there's still some some additional finesse that really is needed there, but there's so much meat in what they provide on the journey with FSD that I just think that if they just solve those front and ends, however they do it, in the software, in the location, whatever, I think that instantly you will have something that's really interesting to people that you could confidently be like, I can get a car and ride from here to there and get out. That's a, that's a robo taxi. That's a cab. That's a that's a ride that I didn't have to question who the driver was. So it passed the Turing test essentially. I think that once you start getting to that, as far as consumers can see it, that's when the price will really really pop off. Yeah, yeah, because well, Rant it's over. it's not just like. Uh, charging extra for the vehicle, but potentially buying into a higher priced vehicle to then make you money. Because I, I think that was kind of the idea initially. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you could have a Tesla and it could make you forty grand a year because it's so mm-hmm. off doing robot taxi stuff. I mean, yeah. But think about the last time you used an Uber or Lyft. Like the 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 drop off usually is pretty seamless, but the pickup is always kind of like clunky depending on where you are. Like think about like airports. Uh, you just come out of the bar and it's really busy streets. I mean, there's all these different places where like you kind of have to like kind of put yourself out there to try to find find the car initially. And I think that's like you're saying, they just need to work out those kinks and try to find yeah. that kind of happy medium. Whether it's like um, maybe it's like predetermined, you know, locations that they know that like rather than finding a parking spot, it just knows that okay, based off of geo data, uh, that they're like okay, we can sit here for a set amount of time and if you don't get to that location in a set amount of time it, it will move on and go to somewhere else i think that once once i see fsd seemingly more aware of what a parking lot is because yep. as far as road structures are concerned a highway is a yep. highway easy long lanes with miles in between mm-hmm. exits it's fine 
city streets. Okay, you got left turns, you got right turns at lights, you got blocks to figure that out. Residential area, you got a you got a left turn and then a left turn a hundred yards later. When I see the vehicles start looking at a parking lot and driving around and being like, I am rendering a parking lot because I see a there's a hell of a lot of parking spaces. I'm looking for one. There, I found one. I'm parking at it. That's when I think that right then it's twenty thousand. 25,000. That is a feature that is saying and if I can do it without sitting inside of it at that moment, mm -hmm. that's what changes the game. Because then I'm like, okay, I'll go see a movie instead of parking, paying for parking. I'll just call, tell the car to go drive to a nearby lot and find a, find a parking space at Ralph's. Or I'll, I'll yeah. you know, there's so like, that's the, and I think that they're showing signs that they're logically and capability wise almost there. And it's those little leaps, those little tiny incremental steps that suddenly put it in a whole new game. Because I remember before FSDB, I remember when it was Navigate on All Pilot was flawless and it just turned off at the highway exit and that kind of stuff. And the fact that we've come as far as we have, I'm like, it's almost there. It's just that little bit of piece left. And I think that it'll really, it'll substantiate a lot of value for what it's worth. Yeah, totally. 100%. Well, guys, um, we couldn't do our live podcast without Jay. Jay is finally here. He says hello. What hey up, Jay? What's going on, Jay? He's here every week. Um, let's go on to the next topic. Talk, we got to talk about Robo Taxi. The those those app those those screenshots from the deck. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's, the, that's the big reveal coming in August. I think it's just interesting that they teased it now. Yeah. And I think that they that if you look at those cards very carefully, the, the shots from the apps, not once does it imply that an automated vehicle is involved. It's all just pickup, location, progress to get there, how you're going to pay, all of that kind of stuff. There's nothing in there that indicates, oh, your your vehicle's arriving that's completely autonomously driving to you, and it's your responsibility to get in and do something with it. So it's, This would be my best joke. It's vaporware from a gasless car company. <laughs> I love it. Is this the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's all location data. Yeah. They got the summon button. So that's supposed to, oh, it's summon. I'm summoning an automatic vehicle. But then the rest of them are just, oh, to change the temperature. Oh, we're almost there. Okay, get out. Here, you want to play some music? That's all it is. There's nothing in this deck that implies that that's an automated vehicle driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh, okay. That's okay. So, okay, sparking a sparking an idea here. What if um, the precursor to autonomous driving robot taxis is basically their own Uber service using yes. Tesla users? Yes. Yeah. That's exactly it. If they, I bet you anything that somebody found out along the way that the 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 most significantly rented vehicle to then go and use as an Uber driver or Lyft driver is mm -hmm. Tesla, then it makes sense that they would just be like, well, okay, well then tell you what, we'll just integrate it to the app, and then you can rent, you can let somebody else even drive it for you, tell earn yeah. money, and then bring it back to you. You know? I would hundred uh, percent. I don't I don't know what they would call it, but like drive the Cybertruck around to pick up people. Yeah, it'd be hilarious. People show up in like a. a oh, truck. I've thought about doing that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, people would blow, it would blow their minds. They'd be like, "What is this car?" <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm 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 100% willing to say that that's exactly what that's going to be. I think that August 8th that's great. is going to be them announcing that the Tesla app will now function as the Uber or Lyft app. You can get Tesla owners to drive you, and I bet you there's going to be some cool quirks like. If you have full self-driving and you activate it while you're doing a drive, you get some sort of a discount or you get supercharger miles out of it or something like that. Oh, yeah. You're selling full self-driving by driving people by turning it on. And then eventually you just phase out the driver. Yeah, that's genius. I like it. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's going to be exciting. I hope that that all comes to fruition. I hope that's what they talk about. Um. They've teased us before, so we'll we'll see. I think they're I think you're right, William. They're getting very, very close. Um, I did want to pivot over to what was the big news last week, which was um the big oh, yeah. the big um pedal gate? Pedal pedal gate. There you go. There we go. Oh, so yeah. this right here is oh, Cash. is the fix. <clears throat> 
I think it says it in the recall notice as well. It's like for repair to be performed with the jig provided for drilling the hole and then the, yeah, uh, screwing it in directly. I heard uh, some haters on, on X, because there's plenty of them, uh, talk about how they didn't clean up all the metal shavings. Although we don't know, <laughs> because the video cuts um, out. Yeah. But like, yeah, I mean, simple simple rivet. I mean, yeah, it goes to show you that you know you can just yeah you know simple fix is probably the best fix at the at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think that it, it, it's also worth. I thought I had read that um, this is just the temporary fix. This is the immediate correct to keep the vehicles drivable until Tesla addresses it with something official. Yeah. So supposedly they fixed it in manufacturing. That's kind of the the idea that we've heard tossed around. Yeah. Um, I'll also send you another photo because um, we, as our daily driver, we also have like a, a Kia Sereno. Mm. <laughs> and I noticed just the other day that it's got a very similar uh, mm. gas pedal function where it's, it's pivoting from the bottom. And wow. my question is, where's the rivet? <laughs> yep. Yeah, where's where's that recall? Where, they didn't where's install the recall? It so... <laughs> Quite literally, like from the crumbs of our, our Kia. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah, which I I didn't realize that I guess it's more of a common thing. I thought it was I thought it was kind of a new design having the the pedal pivot from the bottom. Like that was new to me until we we just got this Kia. I'm like, oh wow, okay, yeah. this is a 2020. It must be more common to have a pedal that pivots from the bottom rather than the top. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that there's that maybe maybe one of our one of our viewers or somebody who finds this later will tell us. It's like I feel like yeah, the 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 swing arm from the top probably had something to do with the combustion engine and the way that mm-hmm. it interacted with the build. Like to build it underneath and have some sort of other thing would just be like, well, why would we do that? And then we could just have a shorter <laughs> thing that just goes right there. So yeah, and I know we yeah. mentioned the the steer by wire, but it's also a good good shout out for Sandy Monroe. They they just posted a video today. Uh, uh, tearing apart and talking about the steer by wire, so they actually show the components of the steering column and how big it is. Really? Once you, kind of, once you see that, you kind of understand. Okay, it probably would need to be a little bit of redesign to get that to fit in a Model Three or Model S. Oh, okay. But yeah, just yeah. hot off the press. But yeah, <laughs> this rivet job. Sandy, no. have the does the teardown ever address the the Ethernet components? Has he, has uh, he gotten that stuff yet? I didn't notice it because I only caught part of the video, but I'm sure. But that's that's part of the the core design of the the steer by wire, so I'm sure yeah, they talk about it. Yeah, that's what I'm most curious about. It's because it sounds. I, I thought I had read somewhere in in the Discord they had mentioned that it was like, yeah, more manufacturers are looking at that because mm-hmm. yeah. that cuts down on that's the that copper in the vehicle. That's perfect. You know? Yeah. And just one more point on it, like that's all I talk about when I talk about the the Cybertruck and why it's so good is because of the steer by wire. Yep. Game changing. Uh-huh. Yep, for everyone. But All right. this rivet job, though, is not. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is like machine manufacturing 101 here. This is like yeah, measure once, cut twice kind yeah. of deal. Here. Yeah, that yeah. is not a. Uh, this is, is one of those. You want to just kind of point to it and be like, "Now, do you see the problem?" Because your job <laughs> Tell me what the problem this is, is. This is yeah. This is a logic and rational, rational thinking thing. And if you can't see the issue, we're gonna have to talk. You know <laughs> why this is not effective. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Which I think I did see the resolve of this specific case. They did redo it. I did because I remember yeah. seeing. Uh, an image of it pushed it down with like a little cutout of the bottom and then another rivet right on top of it. So uh, if if my uh, TV mounting experience shows anything, you, you definitely get it the second time, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you find that stud eventually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You're knocking around on that wall a little too yeah, much. Yeah. Right? Your knuckles start hurting. <laughs> Thankfully, my, my wall is not $100,000. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I wanted to talk about some different items that some accessories that yes. are out for the Cybertruck. I don't know if you guys seen this one. It's the it's the Frunk uh oh, Outrack and this. Net. I like that though. Oh wait. I like it, right? but I don't I don't want to know what Tesla charges. $85. Yeah, I do. <laughs> 
I hope you still have your credit, um, William. No, it's all gone. I use it on the cyber whistle. Yeah. <laughs> and I regret nothing. Well, that's something we didn't talk about in the with the whole like uh, full self driving price decrease is that I would have I would have felt better about it if they were like, oh yeah, all you Foundation series, here's like two thousand dollars credit in the store. Yeah, they're not doing yeah. that. I've been like, fine. <laughs> but no, yeah, this is this is interesting. But how much of an issue is this though? Like once it's in the frunk, it's just gonna roll around in there. Like. Well, I think that's the point of this is that it, it'll keep things held down. So what I have is I have like a little bag in my frunk that has um, um, some microfiber towels, has some cleaning solution for the wrap, you know, um, you know, waterless spray. And I have a bunch of things in there. Well, that thing tends to move around on me, sometimes falls down and, you know, does a whole dance in there while I'm driving. So this would be interesting because hopefully this would kind of keep it down and not moving. Um, so, I mean, I could see that being valuable for something like me, but yeah, I, I don't like, I don't know if it's necessary, but it's an option. Do you remember, I think it was about a, a month or two ago, someone had like, someone had put a skateboard in their frunk and they had like strapped strapped it down. And then it kind of spun around X for a while. I feel like a designer at Tesla saw that and they're like, you know what? I got you. And then $85 yeah. later, here we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you are. I think that I, it's, it's one of those. And, and it's a, and it's a comparison to my Rivian because the, uh, the frunk in that is very much just <laughs> kind of an open basin with mm-hmm. an additional little hidden spot from it in, yeah. in the front. So it's more confined. It's more like a basket. The mm. the frunk on the mm-hmm. Cybertruck has always kind of seemed odd to me. It's just like this mouth that just opens, mm-hmm. and it's just a bench. I tell like I've yeah. shown it every time I show it to a renter. They're like, "What do you use the frunk for?" And I'm like, "Usually to just sit there and on like it gives you a seat." <laughs> like that. I just sit in my porch and just watch people go by. People <laughs> yeah. watch. All the porch going by. I, you know yeah. I make I make friends that way. No. People would be like, "I have never seen one of these in person." They're like, Let's "Sit down." No, totally. Let's chat. Yeah. I you're just waving at people front. as they're driving by your house. So you're just <laughs> sitting in your front. Yeah. Got a pipe in one hand. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. But I put groceries yeah. in it, but it's also it, there's an issue there. Like you kind of have to make sure that it's like pushed up against so that it's not going to get crushed by the, yeah. the frunk. So I think that that's kind of what this solves is the whole idea. Like if I was to go to the grocery store and only pick up like two or three things and I put a bag in the front in yeah. the frunk, I'd be like it'd be rolling around back and forth, left and right, all over the place. Yeah. You know, just I'm sure it's just securing it in in an odd design yeah and then there's a detailing kit yeah, then there's this. a yeah so this this might be the solution that i need for my issue and i don't need Quite to spend the 85 dollar net i just buy the 130 dollar uh detailing kit four solutions to be specific yeah it's four yes which I, I, I was questionable because when I first saw this, I was like, oh, they, they're they they're going to sell like this kit with these bottles that are empty. But if you read in the description, they actually give you the, the solution that they recommend for each surface, each of the four surfaces, which I assume is the same recommendation for the manual because they talk about like certain parts of this and that for, for optimal cleaning. So mm-hmm. yeah. that at least is nice. The price point... Uh, so in the uh, in the layoffs that have happened recently, I was you know because people I don't even know if someone's actually real about it, but they posted they were like, hey, I was laid off from from uh, Tesla, and uh, here's the recipe for how to clean your Cybertruck. And they posted a list of thing, a, a process, and a video, and I was like, okay, if this even if this dude is fake, I mean, this looks like a good good thing to try out on the metal. So I was like, yeah. it was basically just like a, a it was like cutting compound. And uh, a microfiber cloth to wipe off, and then just basically two rounds of window cleaner. You know, so, thing. I'm like that. Totally sounds like what you would do to clean this, like really nicely. So basically, what we've been saying, like Barkeeper's yep. friend is a cutting compound, and then yes. ammonia-free glass cleaner is the glass cleaner. Ammonia-free glass. And that's cleaner. exactly exactly what we've been doing. Like before we wrapped it, we would just hit it with a hit it with a level of ammonia-free ammonia-free glass cleaner hit it with a level of park your friend and then hit it with more glass cleaner and it was good as it yeah. just took, took a few wipes and you you definitely want to follow those instructions because you do not want to be like this poor gentleman oh no <laughs> who took his car <laughs> through the car wash and didn't put it in car wash mode 
and Which, his cyber truck shut down. What on exactly a... happened? This actually like how... is not an image from the story, by the way. This is a yeah, stolen this image. Looks like somebody who's of cleaning course. it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, it's funny because yeah, I, I got this shared to me a couple of times from, from some friends that are like, "Oh, better yeah. not <laughs> wash your truck." <laughs> <laughs> um, but the same thing is like, I feel like this is a it's a common common knowledge with EVs. And yes. I think there was a discussion in the Discord about it too. It was like, well, you 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 sign on to okay, these are kind of different things you need to do with an EV versus a, a gas car, uh, and then putting it into a car wash mode is kind of along with that. Like all the all the Teslas have car wash mode, so I don't know why this is like shocking for people to be like, oh my god, why does it have a car wash mode? You can't just wash your car, wash your truck. It's like, yeah, but. It's it's also electric. Like you gotta like close off all those ports. Let me. You touched on something, Chase. How many times do you guys get maybe in a week? Friends, acquaintances, coworkers, family members sending you every <laughs> negative post, <laughs> news, and just like, hey, be <laughs> careful, or what's up with this? You know, like. When the recall happened, the pedal gate. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh! How many messages I received? I can't even tell you. At least a handful, like yeah. bare minimum, a handful. Uh, I, I basically, honestly, I really just got my dad. You know, because he's seen it. <laughs> he's been here and seen it. So yeah, he was like, "Is your truck? Is your truck affected by this?" And I was like, "Yeah, I assume it is, but I'm supposed to have a service appointment for Thursday, which just got moved." But yeah, I was like, "Yeah, I mean, they're they're contacting people to." to take care of it i mean it's literally just a screw through the thing so he's like oh, okay are you doing Which, that like, uh no my appointment got moved to like may 3rd they can't oh. they can't get my replacement window button or something inside, oh so. really yeah yeah because that was the question so, that i had because the number that they came out and said in the recall didn't match what numbers of trucks that are out there now so that there's a weird kind of disconnect there that we still don't know the story of but like when I did put in my my info in the the site, it said, "Okay, yeah, this is an available recall that we can fix." So I, I'm I'm sure if I would take it into a service appointment, they would then go rivet it and be like, "All right, cool, you're done." You know, they don't have to worry about it. If I would do any other kind of service, like a an tire checkup or something like that, um, but yeah, it's just it's just interesting that it was available, but uh, I was going to go with that, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's often that people will be like, "Hey." Uh, they Watch see out. whatever on the news, and you know, yeah. like, hey, you know, like, I, I get it. And it, often it's just because my golfing buddies that give me for anyways the, <laughs> the hundred thousand dollar truck. It's yeah, just compounding onto it. Of course, I, yeah, we, I think we, that, we get uh, all that. The few people who try to bust my balls about stuff like that, I've I uh, I'm not I'm not fun to try and bust my balls over it. So you're just <laughs> like, it's a pedal gate, and I'm just like, all right. Right. That, okay. So yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, they're gonna fix it. Okay. What else? But they did. Yeah. You know, they. I think we said it before. They did jump on it really quick. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. By the timeline, because of NHTSA, we have. Yeah, it's NHTSA. It's NHTSA, right? NHTSA. Yeah. NHTSA, National yeah. Highway Transportation Safety Administration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of the report, we do have exactly when the first report from a, uh, a customer NHTSA. happened. It was on March 31st. The second report 19. happened on April 2nd. So we do have a timeline there. That's only four weeks ago that we yeah. heard of the first customer having this issue and then now within three weeks of that issue they already are ready at the at the gate with a fix both in production as well as in live and i think it's it goes to show that you know how dedicated they are for you know their first customers that they tesla was showing up to these events last weekend yeah uh, for sure like just for free just like hey let me let me rivet and fix it for you right now. No, yeah. no charge, no foul. Uh, I think that's 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 really commendable, and it's it's more so than some of the larger car makers that mm-hmm. have a recall like this, and they're like, well, gonna have to bring I do it think to it's, us. It's kind of interesting, yeah. How much the the American, or at least the public that you run into, they all are like, oh, how's the build quality? Oh, is it rusting? Oh, yeah. is it like is the battery exploding nightly? Like yeah. they hear so much about the cars that they're just like, wow, these things are just jalopies on fire. I don't know how anybody drives one. Rusting jalopies. Let alone, yeah, let alone how <laughs> your car got here this morning. I have no idea. So when there's something that's being taken seriously, it's kind of like, yeah, that's because that's a real issue. Like all yeah. oh, this they other stuff, right those away. are 
you know, they'll solve it or they'll get to it or whatever. This was a critical issue to the driving and survival of the passengers. And I'm like, yeah. And they, they swooped in super quickly. Which the numbers question, I still question because we haven't really had uh, full confirmation of where the recall numbers fit in line with production models that were made as well as sold. We don't know that. We probably, probably never will. But I think it is interesting that uh, as early as that, that story was starting, uh, I noticed our local news in Austin, they like had put out a posting. They're like, hey, all Cybertrucks delivered recall. And that was like the, you know, the buzzword. to be like, yeah. oh, every single Cybertruck recall. And people are like, mm-hmm. oh my god, it must be million. Yeah, and then <laughs> they retracted it. They actually edited it after the fact. They're like, some Cybertrucks recall. Yeah. So they did catch it. Wow. I'm like, I'm glad that they at least at least edited it, but still, I think the cat was out of the bag because everyone who was talking about it was like, oh, every Cybertruck is recalled now. It's like, is it? You know, or let's let's just ignore the fact that like there was really no safety issue to be had. Like as soon as the the pedal got sucked down, as soon as you hit the brake, it it acts like it should. It just breaks. Yeah. Well, we have a question from Jay. Jay's asking if we know of anybody that got hurt from the recall from this uh, <laughs> pedal gate. And he, he's he. I don't think there is any, right? He, no. I, I never heard of anybody getting hurt. So that's, that's a that's a great no. segue. Because I because I do think that there there well there is a there is one thing I remember from all the other issues that they've tried to blame unintended acceleration on on Tesla's for and I remember some of the court cases like they they brought out the fact that the engineering designs are like if anything applies like even the tiniest amount of pressure to the brake it electronically deactivates any input from the throttle. So you can't stop both at the same time and rev an engine like you can with an ice ice vehicle. With right. an EV, you touch the brake and it deactivates the capabilities of the accelerator. So That's a good point. If if it was a mechanical failure that caused it to become jammed, they they're telling people they're like, yeah, if it gets jammed, touch the brake. Just put your foot right on the brake and it'll bring your car to a stop. It's not like you're fighting the engine where you you know you're 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 fighting an acceleration with brake calipers you're just bringing the car to a stop because the throttle has working at that point yeah. it's literally impossible to do a burnout with this vehicle exactly. outside of outside of i haven't tried it but outside of putting it into off-road mode on the street hmm. that might be able to work because i know off-road mode will de- deactivate traction traction control so oh, maybe that would work okay. but well, it, William, run out right. to your Cybertruck. Go find out. <laughs> Be right back. See out. you guys. Do a burnout in the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just grab a beer. Hang on. I'll see you guys in a minute. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned before, like, people, like, it, it's funny because it kind of goes to that, that same mentality of, like, people are just now, like, getting used to in the last, like, what, you know, eight years that they're getting used to seeing EVs around and understanding that, yeah, this is going to be different. They're not going to be loud. They're going to be fast. Uh, it's not the same as ice vehicles. I can't remember where I was like a couple days ago, but it was like it was it was next to like four EVs at an intersection, and it was so quiet. And I was like, "This is delightful. <laughs> I like it." There's some well, dude out there be like, "No, roll it later." You know, I'm like, "No, just quiet. It's fine. You're well, okay with your thoughts, friend." <laughs> Chase was right. That was a great <laughs> segue. segue. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is this what were they thinking, or do you have something queued up? Uh no, this is I think this is what were they thinking? Um, okay. Yeah, this is this has to be. And this happened perfectly in the same time frame that pedal were they thinking? was happening. <laughs> yeah, they're thinking see. one pedal I was gotta... another. It's up here actually. Oh yeah. So this guy in his Ford Oof. Lightning Something happened with his accelerator. It rolled over. That's pedal. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Blah. Which right onto its side. Which is crazy for an EV too. Yeah. I. I it must. I don't... Be, it must have been so far upright that that camera angle. It must have practically been like above fifty, sixty degrees. Oh for yeah. It to still if roll you, over yeah, like that. Further down, there's a video. Of, it's it's up on it's up on, the, up on something. <laughs> But someone had mentioned, I don't think it was in this this post, but someone had mentioned the dollar amount just from this one wreck was like well over six figures between all the cars. Because it, it, 
uh, this was in line for a car wash, and yeah, mm-hmm. all the way into the car, <laughs> or not a car wash, but like a, oh, what is this? Yeah, a diamond car wash, all the way into the car wash itself. All right. Just compounded. Yeah. I Where's the recall? Right here. here. Here's the video right here <laughs> of the damage. It's crazy. So, yeah, I'm sure well, somebody got hurt from this. Oh, Look yeah. at this. It, it, not yeah, one, not two, to make three, too long of a tangent of it. But There's my, a police uh, vehicle uh, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I made the news. <laughs> I was gonna say back when back when I first learned to drive a car, one of the things my dad told me was like he was like, "You're not you're not driving a car, you're driving a gun, because this thing can kill somebody." Yep. And I and That's I was seeing these videos. It's always one of those things where it's like, "Yeah, this is amazing." Like, but still, it's like, how you know what what uh, what I don't know um, negligence had to happen for them to just so casually hit so many cars. It's like somebody could have been walking between one of those cars, between the police car and the next car, or or somebody could have been walking by. Somebody's kid could have been chasing a, a, a balloon or a lizard or something. It's always one of those things that kind of gives you pause. Yeah. yeah. And I've just spoken fun, but we don't see uh, Ford going out with rivet guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to, right? <laughs> I mean, Ford, Ford's, Ford's like, if we don't kill, if we don't kill more than two percent of civilians any day, we call it a win. We call it a win. It's not a recall; it's a feature. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I Operator really want to know error. what the story was behind this because, yeah, like that's kind of where my my initial skepticism with the the whole pedigree thing was that the way that it was presented and the way that it became viral within, uh, it really became viral almost two weeks after it actually happened. Because mm-hmm. uh, yep. the first report happened, he clearly like contacted Tesla, and then made a TikTok video, and then it was just was was crazy. But then Tesla was already ready to like jump on it. Uh, so it's just crazy, crazy turn of events. Um, I also know that there was like obviously a bunch of Tesla layoffs, but I'm wondering like how that kind of filtered into to all the events too. Just I don't know, backseat driving. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, I did want to talk about um, some quick little news. Um, I'm not sure if you guys seen that. It seems that Lamborghini is getting into the EV game, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So yeah. is Mercedes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, th- well, this is uh, this is their plug-in hybrid. So it's a hybrid. Yeah. It's not full electric, but um, I mean for a performance. Uh, car manufacturer like Lamborghini to say, hey, you know what? Let's let's kind of dip our toes into the electric vehicle uh, realm. I mean, it's it shows you that they're you know they're even recognizing that hey, if you want your vehicle to be a, a performance, I mean, right now they have their new Urus S and Urus Performance models, which have 657 horsepower, but the hybrid version is going to have 789 horsepower. So it's going to be um, even better than their performance model. Um, what are the so other? It's... I mean, did they post like an expected zero to sixty or no? I mean, yeah. Like metric wise, yeah. Depending on weight, because those are also pretty heavy. They're just about as heavy as the Cybertruck, maybe not, maybe not a little bit lighter. Yeah, lighter. wasn't there's just six wasn't that the pounds. thing? Wasn't that the thing with the Mercedes? Like the this new Mercedes electric was like. 200 kilowatt hour battery the yeah. range was only like 240 miles yeah because yeah, of the weight of the vehicle yeah it's, yeah these are pretty heavy hard. um they also kind of i mean they're doing that for a reason um like there's a very real like tax incentive for vehicles over six thousand pounds so they mm-hmm. want to have that tax incentive for yeah uh for the buyers uh mm-hmm. which is just interesting I, that they're getting it I'm without sure so- a motor. Somebody will probably want to set me on fire for it, but there is a part of me that I'm like, okay, I, I want to know. Okay, so I get, you know, Lamborghini as a brand, what their cars are and are capable of doing are amazing luxury, amazing sports supercars. Yeah. But there's a part of me where I'm like, yeah, but it was still, it was still started by engineers who understood the internal combustion engine and translated that into cutting edge, amazing performance. And I, and you know, and I'm, I'm happy to see more brands in, kind of dabble in the EV world, but there's a part of me where I'm like, 
Okay, so it's got the Lamborghini name on it, but what about it is making it a Lamborghini that makes it compete with the state of the art that was Lamborghini? And what's yeah. this vehicle? Because I mean, the the you know the Urus is just I, I I only know it because watching I guess Selling Sunset. Uh, I think one of the one of the women, the realtors. Yeah, don't judge. Me. One of the real. <laughs> Sorry, we we watch Love Is Blind. It's fine. You can, yeah. you can have. You can have hey, yeah. Ch- Chase got no, me. This, get me on Love Is worse. Blind. The show's way worse than Love Is Blind. Do not even try. It's, not, it, it's a step it's above. It's going to be I the agree. downfall of Western civilization. Is selling Sunset, but they're also doing a few more seasons. So anyway, one of the one of the realtors on the show, she drove a yellow Lamborghini Urus, and I remember looking it up, and I was like, oh, that's. That's pretty badass looking. I mean, you know, it's it's super car and pretty and you know and super expensive. But there is just a part of me where I'm like, I wanna, I still want to remember the engineering side of it. I really want to see like Lamborghini come and be like, we contacted a mad scientist who designed these motors. Yeah, and his name is Elon. It has this and it has this. Yeah, just something, you know. Like I want to see that yeah. kind of engineering competition, not just hey, we made a really expensive electric vehicle, guys. Come check it out. You know. Yeah. I want to. I want to read the stats for it. I want to know you what it does. Nerd out about it. Yeah. Right. You want to yeah, nerd man. out about it. Yeah. Because I still it. like these cars. I get that electric vehicles are priced north, way north of most most EV. I'm sorry, uh, internal combustion cars. So there's a tendency to call them luxury vehicles, whereas I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's got some Alcantara interior and, you know, it's got some features and stuff. But otherwise, the value is there for what you're getting from these cars. They're not luxury. They're just priced higher because they cost more to make, but they're still like awesome. You know, they, they right. I feel like every dollar is worth it for every Tesla and every EV you drive. But I want to know where that money is going for the Lamborghini. I want to hear them be like. It can literally like destroy pavement with these motors or something right. like that. I mean, yes, show me. You know, I want to. I want to know about the weight distribution because I feel like they're already over six thousand pounds as an ice vehicle. Like, where where did the is all of that in the engine? They just took out and they filled it with battery, but. I mean, or is it all the frame? Is it like some combination yeah. of, of different alloys? Well, remember, alloys it's, that it's, 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 it's a down? hybrid, so it's going to have an engine still, and it's going to then true, have some true. batteries. So, and if it's a newer heavy. hybrid, they're yeah, they're not going to do like NiCad batteries or or any other chemistry. They're going to do lithium nowadays. Oh. So yeah, so how does that yeah. distribute? That's crazy. I do know from firsthand knowledge that uh, uh, the great streamer Misgif, uh drove a Urus before driving my Cybertruck. Uh, the dual motor, and he did say that the acceleration is very comparable. It's about the same. So awesome. that goes to so, show you that if what you're it's gonna, looking to looking to buy Urus, just get a separate truck. Yeah, there you go. Um, you speaking go of get one, they're like everywhere. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, a years. and I mean, it's it's a great um, purchase, and the reason for that is because the value holds. which Uh, which is crazy because the tesla is notorious for having terrible trade-in values yes but here we are uh which i i didn't even do the math when i saw this but i'm curious because i saw the resale agreement said something about like 25 cents a mile right yeah Mm -hmm. 29 but they said that's if they're buying it back is this a trade in because they want to buy this is a trade in and get rid of this? Yeah. This is a trade in. Two thousand dollars. Yeah. Two thousand dollars lost in value. So it literally is like, yeah, it's like basically a sticker a price. Practically there. Yeah. 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 It's so it's, it's a it's I mean, obviously the taxes and all that like go into it, right? You're you're really into the yeah. hundred and I mean, I think I was like a hundred and eleven, twelve, something like that. What? Um, Right with, with taxes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Already, this is yeah. 101. 101 I don't after taxes. Okay, well maybe I need to go back so. and look at it, but it's something but yeah. like that. But um, but yeah, I mean ninety eight thousand. I mean that's um, it's impressive. That's a that's really really encouraging. And he has almost eight thousand miles, which I don't think most people have on their cyber trucks right now. I don't, I don't mean to get too heady about it, but I will say this. <laughs> So we've got we've got CFOs resigning. We've got a- a- autopilot in the forefront. We got a lot of different. What is this? What do you? What do you? What do you, uh, no, what do you show. Five thousand miles. Oh, okay. I think I'm at like three thousand. But um, you know, we've got a lot of a lot of the sky is falling news stories 
and mm-hmm. some of them credible. So there's a part of me where I'm kind of like looking at this at this buyback value of the Cybertruck. And let's just say for a second, let's just entertain the notion that there are only 7,000 Cybertrucks currently in possession by owners. Is there a, is there a possible future where $98,000 is cheap considering how rare our trucks could become given the unforeseeable short term, the unforeseeable the uncertainty. future? Uncertainty. Yeah, you yeah. know, because it's like, because I mean, you know, uh, DeLorean was taken down from a Coke bust, you know, and and I'm like, I don't, th- I bet there's a lot of people who really thought there was a future for that car and that car company, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say I, you know, that, that in any way possible that it'll happen with Tesla, but there no. is a part of me where it's like there's a really weird amount of controversy going on there, and there's a part of me that I'm like. What's to stop them from just one day pulling the plug on Cybertruck sales and saying, you know what, we were kidding, we're just going to do this other design. It looks like a Model Y, but it's also a truck. You know, like, that can happen. Yeah. Tesla is weird. They do weird things. You know, and the future is uncertain. So I'm like, 98000 I'm like, what happens if this thing becomes a little bit more collectory? But It could be possible. I mean, looking at it right now, uh, the cheapest DeLorean I can find online is 77000 mm-hmm. but most are 97 89 and 88 So, yeah. That's what I that's what I keep I, telling people. I think this car, I mean it all depends, right? Because if they're going to make millions and millions and millions and millions, that's why yeah. it was important for me to get the foundation series. Yeah. Because totally. even but if we'll there's 10,000, even if there's 15,000 foundation series, yeah. In 20 years that 15,000 is going to be is going to dwindle down to 10, you know, yeah. just from cars being totaled and damaged and, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, I think that's a it's a good investment in my personal opinion. Yeah. It's kind of like a one of those polarizing vehicles that a lot of people hate, but there's possibly, and I think it's going to be a high chance that in forty years it's going to be worth some money. It's a it's a billboard I think that it's or just, wheels. It, it, to me, it's it's also kind of a historical thing. It's like we yes. have not seen a car that looks this extensively different than everything i mean I, every time i i go to costco once a week because you know wife two kids and a dog so everybody eats a lot of food so we go to costco you drive around the parking lot and it's you know yeah pickup truck minivan yeah. toyota corolla hey look it's a jetta you know what it's just the same shapes it's the same and then curves. there's will it's no spice. Yeah, then there's me and the Cybertruck, which <laughs> I use the little the little latch in the bed. Sitting I, in his front, he's waving at all the Costco there. shoppers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, I'm on Turo. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's like you you just see so many different so many different cars that aren't different. They're just all yeah. the same. And then yeah. there's this thing that's on the road now. And I'm like, if if there could be a legacy, I wish it would be. Yeah, let's get back to making weird things again. You yeah. know reinventing the wheel because it's fun oh. um, and i think uh, so the, the trading value is kind of a kind of nice confirmation because that was kind of one of the assumptions we made when we first got into the cybertruck knowing that there was a twenty thousand dollar premium we're like okay for instance this is gonna solidify we're gonna treat this like a business and that was the one thing that i was like okay at least there's always the possibility that we you know, say the business doesn't pan out or does it's not profitable, we could sell it back to to Tesla themselves. Yeah, we could get out. Like, it's an easy exit. It's super low risk. So I was like, okay, this isn't a no brainer. Like this is low risk investment with an out that doesn't hurt us at all. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of a win win. Exactly. Um, we have a comment from Bill who says, um, Bill? Talk, going back to the Lamborghini plug in hybrid. He mentions, um, or he makes a comment saying that plug-in hybrid plugins worry him. I have to worry about the maintenance on both electric mm-hmm. components as well as combustion components. That's what are your guys' fair. thoughts? You're, you're you're increasing many the points of failure, and you're and you're increasing points of failure that play into each other. Because I don't know how hybrids necessarily they must have a fail-safe program, but if your battery fails. Does your hybrid then, you know, does it like what's the efficiency look like only doing the combustion mm-hmm. engine? Mm-hmm. Or if you're driving for the electric part, but there's no, you know, the combustion engine isn't working, what do you do then? I It right. just feels like hybrids are, again, you know, my every time I talk to my folks about the future and whatever, because they, they're looking for a new car, 
And I'm like, you know, have you thought about battery electric? And they're always like, we're looking at hybrids. So I feel like there's still just this 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 hesitation in a lot of people to be like, yeah, you can live your life happily uh, every day just using electricity to drive on. It's it's completely feasible. It's so feasible that years ago it was feasible and it's only gotten better, you know? So it, convincing people, I think, is the problem. And I think that hybrids are the solution to that. I think that that's how they capture that that those sales, those people who are like, but I still need to be able to gas up in five minutes. So yeah. mm-hmm. it's the skeptics vehicle. Like, it, like I, I feel like it's it's really just kind of there, like you said, for, for people that are not ready and people that are, you know, politicians that are just trying to pad the numbers, you know, because I feel like tenfold of hot, like if we're talking ICE vehicles, I feel like there's technology out there to make them more efficient. It's just not not being allowed. Like I think there is possibility to make the the gas vehicles a little bit more efficient than we're seeing, but because of money, we're not seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. Or or you know engineering design changes that are that that the the juice isn't worth the rub. You know yeah. they're like yeah you know we've got synthetic alloys that are stronger than than the steel that we use for a lot of these cars, but retooling for it it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to cost yeah. us so much money, and it'll take us 15 years to recapture that. We don't even know if the design can sustain 15 years anymore. Yeah. So then they say nah, we'll just keep making the same inefficient buckets that weigh <laughs> four to five thousand pounds. And guess what? The engines, the energy density that you can that you can explore from fossil fuels will only give you so much horsepower. The only so much ability to move so much mass. So, right. which is kind of yeah, be, it's economics. The genius around Tesla going with the the Cybertruck because they're just like, no, we're going to make this and we're going to invent whatever we need to along the way. Coming up with new manufacturing techniques for stainless steel because people are like, you're crazy if you're doing stainless steel. Um, but they're just like, no, this is the challenge, and we're gonna we're gonna accomplish it because, you know, look at all of the things that have come out from even just the Cybertruck's announcement. Now we're we're in a world where all the major players want to get an EV truck out there because mm-hmm. like it showed that yes, there's a demand for an EV truck. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll make an EV truck now. But right. Ford wasn't thinking, you know, EV truck, you know, ten years ago. No. So now no. here we are. No. No. I mean, yeah, they pushed the envelope. Yeah. They 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 forced the hand of the yeah. legacy manufacturers a hundred percent. I definitely remember yeah, I think it was somewhere in test uh, on one of the on the Tesla subreddit somebody told me years ago they were like they were like, Okay, cool. Tesla did their part, but now they need to step out of the way and let the big boys <laughs> And I was okay. like, Bro, what are you Who's... you know it made it made zero it was reddit <laughs> tough guy talking yeah, or it, whatever well i feel like tesla was the only um is the only car manufacturer that can do what they did with the cybertruck mm-hmm. right because you have an owner uh, or the head of your company is crazy right but in a good way yeah. Some would argue in a bad way, but it, nonetheless. But he's 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 a he's a genius, right? And so he just and he takes chances. He goes, "Let's do it." Hey, we want to put stainless steel. Let's put stainless steel. Well, how are we going to put stainless mm-hmm. steel? Well, we'll build machines for it. Like, and he has the money to do it, and he, he doesn't care. You know, mm-hmm. when you have a lot of these other manufacturers, I look at every penny and go, uh, "Do we really want to do that? Do we need to do that?" He goes, "I don't yeah. care. We're going to do it." And it's out of principle. Almost. Let's just exactly. Yeah. Let's just do it. I don't and, care. Let's just do it. I want to do it. As, and that is kind of one of the cool things about the Cybertruck again is that they, you've got all these people designing vehicles at all the different e- EV and ICE vehicle manufacturers. You got so many people designing cars where it's like, all right, it swooshes like this, but what if it swooshed like this? And then you have somebody like like Tesla who's willing to put out a product that's like. What if it looked like this? And then everyone's just like, "What?" You know, it's 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 very specific of a look and an aesthetic in a way that I feel like it's it's not immediately explicable, and that gap leaves a lot of room for commentary, especially negativity. But yeah, I mean, I think that they 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 went and did something bold, and there's a part of me that I will be like, you know. Say what you will about, say what we will, because Elon is crazy. But say what we will about him. 
the fact that he at least embraced what I assume to be Franz's design for this truck and what they came up with. I mean, I drive the thing around and I dig it when kids are like just seeing my truck and they're just <laughs> like they just they don't know what they're looking at. And it's like, come on, these are the eyes that are taking in the world for the first time. And they're looking at this truck being like, that's freaking different. That's awesome. You know, that's something that's inspiring, you know. Oh, yeah. It's not the end all. Like, not, I don't think my parents are going to get one anytime soon. But it's <laughs> it's just awesome. Well, we Push we, the needle. we have a comment from Adventures of Tess Latino. He is uh, stating there are roughly 3,900, I'm assuming Cybertrucks, in customer homes today. And then he goes on to say that his Cybertruck has 8,139 miles, and he picked it up on March 4th. So he's, uh, he's putting some mileage Look into it. his. Um, yeah, but I wanted to talk that's about... two the... months, so that's 4,000 a month, so I mean, 48,000 a year. Jeez, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have Tesla's insurance, because we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait for that premium. But he mentioned the 3,900 in customer homes. So I did see something recently, and I... I looked it up i'll pull it up right here um about how many are actually produced and out on the road so this um gentleman says that he was uh at tesla in plano texas and he saw cyber beasts with vins in the 5000s yeah which sounds kind of high but and dual motors in the 8000s yeah. yeah that's where like i don't believe the i don't believe the nitsa number I don't think that's accurate at all, which it raises the question, where did the gap come from? Like, where where did they get that number? And is it, like, the gap between, like, Tesla employees and regular people? Or what? I, we, we really don't know. Um, what does seem to be apparent is that the cyber beasts are kind of skipping numbers. So, like, there there's, like, some in the, the hundreds and then some that just skipped. So, it, like, just to give a rough estimate, it seems like for every twenty dual motors, there's one cyber beast produced because they're they're not as rampant as the the duals. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a lot of room for question as far as like what's going on. We even had the report, you know, two weeks ago now that they were up to a thousand a week, and that was when we were still seeing just five thousand vents. Now we're seeing eight thousand vents. Like that's that's a lot of questions of like, okay, how many are actually out there? That is actually, um, we didn't touch on that with the earnings call um, discussion. The 1,000 per week um, is what they're claiming now, right? Um, Which is about a third of the full speed. Because if they're full speed to do 200,000 units a year, that's 3,800 trucks a week. So like so a less, quarter. Less than a third. Yeah, yeah, like a quarter. And then also... Um, Which seems I mean, high. They, I mean, it seems like... Ramp, that, I mean, remember, Remember that the ramp for the Model 3 was uh, employee deliveries, I think, in June, and then it took them until December that they were delivering 1,000. So, I mean, yeah, much faster for Tesla to have before. gone to 1,000 a week in Within two the first months, three months of effectively really kind of ramping. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Yeah, that is. I mean, and you're right. I think the t the Model Three was, um, yeah, June. I think is when they started, and I didn't get mine until March the following year, and I was yeah. at ten thousand five hundred. You know, my vet. Yeah. So the well, first one I saw in person was in like December when I was at Disneyland, and it was there was like one, and I was like, oh crap, there it is. You know. What's well, needless to say that um, the Giga Factory was kind of built for this purpose in mind so uh, i'm sure that yeah. yeah yeah all of those kind of manufacturing needs were were met from day one exactly um just another comment from bill bill uh, mentions we we're talking about the you know ford and legacy truck uh, manufacturers his comment says um elon didn't have to worry about ticking off his longtime truck buyers that expected the classic truck if ford did that did the Cybertruck, their F-150 sales would would be hurt. So yeah. it is true. It is true, right? They're, there's, they're, they already have a built-in customer base that is expecting a certain type of truck. They go yeah. way, oh, just totally different with something like the Cybertruck, and 
yeah, it, it's like a bomb you know, going I, off. Yeah, Eric, you said that you're 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 you've been in the trucks for a long time, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it, it's like I think that, and it's something that I've noticed, but I've never been a part of. I've never in my life owned a pickup truck up until the Cybertruck, and. I, I, it is astonishing to me how it is a culture. It is a lifestyle. Yeah. It is a people who are like, I will never drive anything else until the day I die. Like, you'll never catch me driving a Civic. They just are trucks. And it's just kind of impressive. It's like a yeah. cultural, like that, that, that ingrained of a thing. I think that, so yeah. So I think that all of those companies, it's like, all they can do is be like, yeah, it's tougher. Yeah, it's stronger. Yeah. It's, you know. I, I think that I remember. Uh, I think it was like ten years ago. I think one of them, one of the manufacturers, changed their truck bed to like partial aluminum, and got a huge call out because, like, yeah, it's cost effective because they thought I they were going to rhino line it, but there were plenty of people just doing rock and bare metal, but throw tools in the back and would just punch right through. I remember and, that. And it's like, yeah, and man, the truck owners were really pissed about it. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely cultural. Like my my dad had a '92 uh, F-150 full seven foot bed, so single cab, but it also had a dual motor or dual tank. So I don't even remember the range on that, but he could take it for for miles. And then after that, I had a 2015 F-150, drove that for like six or seven years, and then now sold it to get the Cybertruck. So definitely, it, like I remember, the, it, definitely a cultural aspect to it because. We would go to Thanksgiving, and my uncle, he was a big Chevy guy. We were all a Ford family. So it was just, it was definitely like digs going both ways. The bow tie versus the Ford. That well, was cultural starting with Cybertruck. Like, it's, it's a phenomenon. And I think, I think then what ends up happening is you just sit there and go, okay, well, um, I'll just go ahead and wrap my truck to look like a <laughs> Ford F-150. <laughs> Hashtag wrap of the week. <laughs> so I, I question because we we saw this leak like way early like this was like november like october last year that we saw this kind of leak out yeah the when internet. the rcs were floating around yeah no yeah. no mention of it ever ever again what what was this like this like is we just don't have an answer <laughs> it's a wrap <laughs> i know but, like, but it's why? just it's it's just you know some guy that wants to troll. He's trolling. I love it. Yeah, I hope it's someone who had an RC and just decided, decided to wrap it for the lulls. I think that would yeah. be mm-hmm. the best the best story about this. And cause... if you really look at it, even if you look at like the window, like look at the windows on the driver door and the passenger or the door in the back of this driver's yeah, side. It's got the little like mm-hmm. notch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the the window uh, on there. But um, I but it. I do want to get into the wrap of the week, and we have a special one this week. Um, All right. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one up. More special than the the cyber Trump. <laughs> yes, <laughs> cyber. So, so this uh, wrap is actually our viewer Jay's. Oh, oh no, hey, yeah, awesome. Jay. It's looking good. Satin black, right? Satin Ooh. black. He just got it done today. Okay, that is nice. nice. I picked it up. You. Oh yeah. I'm telling you, I I think that cyber trucks belong in darker colors or completely Same. blacked out colors like this. Yeah, and to get specifics, like the the trim around the wheels and the base the base trim as well as the bumpers, they're all obviously black plastic. So any colors you can get to complement the black plastic is good. And then the opposite side, any complement colors you can get to contrast well are also good. I definitely yeah. think like bright colors or dark dark colors are always great. Yeah. So, congratulations, Jay. You are the wrap of the week, and it looks it looks good. So, um, totally. Congratulations. I would definitely be joining you if it wasn't for the fact that we're putting it up on Turo, because I knew that that's very popular, and I really wanted it. But everyone else is probably going to think the mm-hmm. same, so I don't want to be. Exactly. I need to get I need to get my wrap. It is it is mentally exhausting how much hair the exterior of that truck requires. Hair fingerprints are. Uh, care, excuse me. Oh, care. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hair, on Sorry, the yeah, it's, hair yeah. And fingerprints. <laughs> yeah, it's getting, it's getting <laughs> late. Dumb and dumber where they did the thing with the dog. Yeah, I just made it look like it's getting you know, real it's sticky. Hairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can't it's, imagine. It's fingerprints everywhere, and I'm like, I can't just like wash it. It's you know, you have yep. to do the call pound. And... 
washer and stuff, you know. So yeah. Not... Like ours with the PPF is so much easier, and I'm sure you get it's same with the vinyl, Eric. Of like having, you can just wash it down. I think if anything, just kind of being more cautious for the PPF. I'll take that in comparison to the the overabundance of, of effort to have to clean off all the, mm. the fingerprints. Mm-hmm. It is a yeah. chore. Yeah. yeah, I would I would love if if I was to wrap it again, I would wrap it probably in PPF. Um, first you time PPF. wrapping, yeah, the first time I've done a, a vinyl wrap was on the Cybertruck. Every Tesla I've had previously, I always put a clear PPF over it, and that's just it keeps the color of the the natural paint color, but yet protects the paint. And the Cybertruck, I said, no, I'm gonna go vinyl, and man, the rock chips and everything, I just oh yeah. It drives me Although, nuts, but it is better than ever, fingerprints, for sure. If I could ever convince my wife to get the the Model Three performance, uh, definitely would be like a matte, not matte, sorry, satin PPF. It's mm-hmm. so like get the black paint, satin clear PPF over top, so it looks kind of matte black. Mm-hmm. Can't sell her on zero to sixty in two point nine seconds. <laughs> I know. Well, I mainly it's the price point. I'm like, ah, oh, it's half the price of the Cybertruck. Yeah. That was that wasn't enough sell. They were like, "Well, but what house stuff can we put?" In that? Okay, <laughs> fair. Fair, it's just, fair. It's just got to be your toy. Well, before <laughs> before we sign off, I have a little thing because I want to show Chase because I know it's been something that he's been irritated with. Oh yeah. Uh, let me. Here you go, Chase. The first. Wait, light, light, light bar. Light bar. Ooh, on a dual because that's. Well, it's an aftermarket Ooh, product. Aftermarket. That yeah. T Sports oh, yeah. line is Ooh. is selling. Right. Well, hold on. Let me Google. Yeah, this. somebody chopped into the top to wire it in. <laughs> wow, I know that's that what is... you've been waiting for. You've been wanting your uh, light bar, so. I mean, now I that s- I see that, I kind of want to crack out the the credit card real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because <this> is... <laughs> I want it so bad. Um but yeah, I the legitimately if this is like T Sport is doing their own yep. own bar, hell yeah. This is this is Is there is an what additional needs to be scroll, scroll down a little bit, Eric. Is there an additional light bar like underneath the beneath the windshield? Oh, yeah, what is that above there's, the, the laser? There's, oh the little yeah, there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. the lights. Oh. Yep. There's the two um what do they call those? Uh, spotlights, I guess. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, there's a. I can't. It's slipping my mind right now. Um, but yeah, there's additional lights like on the hood. So it has the light bar and the additional lights. And right. they're they're it, this light bar connects to the 48 volt. Perfect. Um, that's on the roof, so yeah. you have the um, capability of turning it on and off via the touchscreen inside. I mean, it's. Yeah, I'd want to. I'd want to have like a motor on it so you can also like tilt actuate it or tilt it to whatever you want to light up more. Yeah. Quite literally, just commented on that that Instagram post. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I think like I don't know. It, it kind of goes on the list of of stuff. Um, yeah. With with Tesla, this is like uh, we also haven't seen Cyber Beast get their light bars yet. So no, I mean, that would. I'm I'm not gonna lie. That would piss me off if We're i had waited for the out. cyber beast and i didn't get that, that delivery yeah we're close to closing out april i still don't know where my aero caps are same no contact nothing uh well, mine are in I the garage that... <laughs> you're like they can sleep there. <laughs> sell those things at a premium people Dude, looking I, for them. I, i've told you i've already had an i think the highest offer i got was 2000 what <laughs> take it no take it i told sell them right no, now no i told Sir. the guy to Go fly out, fly a kite. Even even if they're like slightly damaged. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Well, I, I guess. I don't. You're really know, betting but... on this on this historical. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really am. Token. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I really, I appreciate really am. that. You say it that way. I'm like, hey, I'm a nerd. Keep it in the box. You know, do what yeah. do what you got to do to maximize. Well, that's why I took them off. Because after the uh-huh. side swipe and mine got scratched up a little bit, I think I could get it fixed. I think someone can kind of buff it out. But anyways, because it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, I just right then I went, you know what? These things are like collector's items. They're rare. There's only a few yeah. hundred out in the world. I'm putting them in the garage, never going back on the car. Even though I like them on right. the car, I'm never putting them back on the car. Because Respect, yeah. then one freaking flies off and I never see it again. Then I'm going to be kicking myself. 
And it's also it's right. like it's coming up on three months. I'm like I'm surprised that there aren't like aftermarket aero cap wheels designed by people who are being like yeah those other ones that they're going to give you guys kind of look stupid here's something we're making or something you know yeah and they really do look stupid so close <laughs> i have like click through like a thousand links to get to the, the link to to just buy the, oh there we go all right it's 850 hell yeah okay let's go and it's on sale they're uh, marked, holy crap marked down from a thousand thank you uh but yeah 850 there we go but yours is showing 850 i'm wait Thank you. Welcome everybody to tonight's episode of yeah. on Cyber Shopping. Uh, <laughs> Chase is Chase is gonna spend some cash. Yeah, I'll, hey, I'm I'm not gonna I lie. Look I was looking that. at it too. I was looking at He's it like, too. Oh, my bars. <laughs> I like that they they do have kind of like a uh, like a beefier mount, kind of reminiscent of what uh, Heavy D Sparks kind of manufactured. Like they're kind of like mounting it further back. For some stability, that's nice. Yeah, this this has to happen. Like A fifty is a, a soul soul me on that. And just to um just because I'm picking a mine up tomorrow, let me see if I can find this oh. thing real quick. I was gonna say, is this the light thing? Yeah, so let me just pull this up real quick. Give them a little shout out, why not, right? Hell yeah. So and if it's who I think it, yeah, yeah, they hit me up too. They're like, "Hey, we don't do this." I'm like, "Do I need to ship it out to you guys, or how's this work?" Yeah. Nemesis. Oh, sh- oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. So I'm picking mine up tomorrow. It already has this on there. Um, and yeah, I would love to know how this actually works and how they're like. Like, I hope to God it's not like one of those like little like. Uh, you know those tiny like uh remote controls for like rbg things that are that's controlling it i hope it's more fancy than that (laughs) well of how this actually works you're gonna find out tomorrow hell yeah i'm picking it up tomorrow ties into the two yes smart home app or something like that (laughs) (laughs) it's a philips hue um integration now let me um let me see if i can oh here we go Pull this up real quick too. Sorry, we're, we're kind of our viewers are probably like, "What the hell are these guys doing?" Damn so here. Yeah. Uh oh. Ooh. Hell yeah. So yeah. The black one's Man, mine. The blue see- one is someone else's. New season of Night Rider looks sick. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's something too. And I I've been talking to them over there as well about doing a light bar. And doing all that, so we'll see. Okay. But all right, you guys have anything else? I think that hopefully this light bar comes in time for next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we 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 did a lot. We went we went over an hour and a half just because uh, yeah, there was a lot to a lot talk to about. Through. Yeah, Yo, yeah. It, the earnings call was yesterday. Come on, that took up a fair amount of time. That was a lot of discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It you was. know. Model 3, so, I didn't expect that. There's a lot of no. Things. Yeah. So, all right, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And to next week. Cool. See you. Later. Yeah.